All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the EM Drive mod, which is being made by forum user Beal. And what this glorious little piece of work looks at into the game is the Resonant Cavity Thruster, better known as the EM Drive, which has been all over the scientific news the past year, causing quite the kerfuffle as it seemingly produces thrust without any propellant, and that, frankly, is just awesome. Despite, you know, breaking laws of physics, etc., it's a pretty cool thing. And I gotta admit, there's been a lot of different mod makers making EM drive parts because, well, it has been such a popular thing in space news, but this is the first one I've actually decided to look at because... Well, besides being by far, in my opinion, the most stock alike, which I always enjoy, it also seems to be the most, uh, I'd say, balanced of the ones that I've seen on the forums. So let's just jump right on into the VAB and have a look at the one and only part that does make up this mod, the EM Drive. So let's grab ourselves a small little HECS probe core, as this is a very small part. It falls in the .625 size category, and then, of course, we need to head down here to engines where we have the CSNTL Newton Resonant Cavity Thruster and I love that they went with the name Newton on this good on you Bill that's just uh that's that's amusing and I love the description on this thing because basically it sums up what the engine is in reality it's not entirely clear how this device produces thrust but it does so without using reaction mass and that what makes it so special and so awesome so let's just pop this thing on to get a good look at it and uh, show you well show off basically why I think it is so stock alike I mean it it's coloration it's modeling it's texturing all of it looks very much like other parts that we do have which for me is always a very big bonus as it looks like it fits in with the other things now as for the stats on this <laughs> it does not produce much thrust maximum thrust in vacuum of one 0.25 kilonewtons. So you're definitely not going to be winning any speed competitions with this thing, but it will effectively go on forever so long as it has electricity. So it's perfect for those deep space probes where you need this thing to go a very, very long way for a very long time. Now, as for the quote unquote propellant, it uses electric charge at a rate of 0 0.045 per second and then uses something called EM drive radiation pressure, which the engine itself produces right here in the generator as basically the fake propellant for the game to make it work, where it uses 0 0.003 per second of that, whereas it actually produces one per second of it from the generator, and then of course holds one radiation pressure. So that's basically how they've gotten the engine to work in here, which is perfectly suitable and quite nice, quite nice indeed. Now I do want to point out the cost of this thing in funds over here. Oh, let's actually click back on it at 10,000, which kind of makes it one of the more expensive engines. As you can look around, like the Rapier is 6,000, the Dawn Electron electric propulsion engine, which you'd use for a very similar purpose as with the Newton. I mean, this is going to be for deep space probes. It's even more expensive than that at 8,000. Plus, it is, if you're going to be in career mode at the end of the tech tree, uh, as kind of a way to balance it between hard to get in the tech tree and cost at 10,000 because it does kind of need some form of balancing factor because as I said as long as this thing has electricity it can effectively go forever making it have effectively infinite delta V so it's it's a pretty powerful engine in theory here again so long as you have electricity so let's actually go and take a look at a probe I put into orbit earlier with one of these things which kind of has overkill on the energy frankly because I put solar panels and a little nuclear reactor on it so uh <laughs> it's definitely not gonna be running out of any electricity anytime soon and yeah just a small basic little probe for this thing and there we are a functioning probe with our resonant cavity thruster and uh, well here's kind of the kicker because well with any engine even the ion thruster you hope to have some sort of particle trail and some sort of sound but 
it's an engine that literally uses no no propellant, so it wouldn't have a particle trail, and odds are it wouldn't have a sound. Because again, it's not using and it's not burning any propellant, it's not ionizing any propellant, anything like that. It is literally just using electricity to, to make thrust. And so this thing has no sound, it has no particle effect. The only th way you really know that this thing is working, besides it actually producing thrust, is the glow of the heat that it produces, because it will produce heat. So you may want to watch that for longer journeys. So if we actually do uh, activate the engine here, I'm on the dark side of the uh, you know sun right now, because, well, we're going to want to see the heat build up right here, because that's really part of the reason you know it's running. There we go. You start to get the glow in this center ring right here, so you can see that it <laughs> is actually functioning and producing heat. You do also get a bit of a glow back here, but it's most uh, noticeable on this main conical section of the engine. And yeah, it's it's functioning. It's functioning perfectly well. We are continuously uh, you know, increasing our speed at the moment, and if we actually... I uh, go out to, ooh, not that, oh boy, it'd help if I hit the right key. There we go, our apoapsis point is going up and up as we accelerate here. Uh, slowly, but eventually it's gonna get you where you need to go, and again, with only the use of electricity. That's it. And with uh, what I do have on this ship, with two small solar panels and also, of course, a radio uh, a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, yeah, we, we have all the electricity we could ever need. And in fact, I really would only need the solar panels. So long as we stayed within good view of the sun, we'd be fine. We'd be perfectly fine with this thing. And we could basically have it go anywhere we so desire. I mean, we've been running this engine for what, maybe two minutes or so now? And it's already gone from the 250 meter orbit up to almost 700,000 there. So, you know, going very, very nicely. And eventually, uh, like I said, it'll get you where you need to go. It'll just take a little bit more time. But all in all, that's, it's got all the time in the world, and I'm perfectly okay with that. So yeah, that's really all there is to this mod. It's an <laughs> it's electrical engine that makes no sound, has no particle effect, but will produce infinite amounts of thrust so long as you have the sun to power these uh, solar panels. And it's, it's, a, it's a pretty nice little thing. I actually do like this one. Like I said, there, I've seen loads of these things pop up on the forum. And this is honestly the first one that I've actually liked because uh, of between the fact that it looks stock alike, plus the balancing mechanics that have gone into it. Um, yeah, it's a good little engine. So if you'd like to give it a try for yourself, take a uh, look at the link in the description as always. And yeah, that's really all there is to this video, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed and of course you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.